This is To Hatch a Pod. Sit back and relax as Key, Corey, Greg, and Ashley talk about what's happening in and around To Hatch a Pod. It's To Hatch a Pod time. Key Budge, Corey Costello. Corey, how you doing? I'm doing very well. We've brought in an old friend today. Okay. Well, he's not Come that old, but he's a he's a long time friend. A long time friend. Yeah, okay, we'll go there. prefer that. <laughs> Aaron Falk, President and CEO of the Kern Community Foundation. Aaron, welcome back. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Corey. And I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything hurts. I'm tired. Yeah, right. Yeah, I hear you. We're, we're in the same boat. <laughs> well, it's nice to have you back. I think it was probably two years ago that we had you last in because we didn't talk about it last year with you here in, on the podcast, but we want to talk, give big curtain. It's right around the corner. It's always the beginning part of May and here we are. It's May. So this is your busy time. Yeah, we're, uh, we've got a lot going on at the foundation. Give big Kern is our flagpole event. Uh, first Tuesday in May. Uh, you can check it out at give big And let's, let's talk about uh, what give big Kern is all about and what you do at the foundation, because you help so many groups across Kern County and how many uh, different nonprofits are a part of the foundation and what you are supporting. So there are about 300 nonprofits in Kern County. We have worked with well over half of them on something or the other within the last couple of years. And then I know this year I had recommended our police foundation to reach out to get connected and they did and they're going to be a part of the group. Yes, they are. Yeah, they're excited. This is another opportunity for them to kind of showcase their what they do for the community with the police department and supporting. Uh, and I think the foundation, the police foundation, Corey, and, you know, has shifted a little bit and is really going to be focused. I, from what I understand on youth. Yeah. And we explore a program, youth activities, league, mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah, the, that kind of stuff, the Explorer program is big. I mean, it hasn't really been active in several years. Um, and I think now more than ever, it's more important th- to get, kids involved in law enforcement, especially if they have you know, interest in pursuing that as a career, you know, laws have changed and they can't quite go to the Academy after high school or anything now, but that experience as an explorer really helps pave the way when they head to college to get the education necessary to be a police officer. So it's a, it's an important program and it's really good to get the police foundation kind of behind and, and funding that piece of it for the explorers. And I know with this, this new energy that the Tashby Police Foundation has, and I've been talking with them, I've been talking with your team, Aaron, and recommended that they reach out. I thought there was a, there was definitely a, we could coordinate some kind of a collaboration. And I was super happy to see that they were participating in Give Big Kern Day. We are too. Um, never miss a chance to work with our first responders and law yeah. enforcement and happy to find other ways to work with them, uh, even past Give Big Kern. Well, let's talk about Give Big Kern specifically and what it is for those that may be not familiar with this day and, and how we can each help participate and also help numerous nonprofits if we like to. Sure. So Give Big Kern is the official day of giving for Kern County. So say the Board of Supervisors. And it's the first Tuesday in May. So this year, that's Tuesday, May 7th. Since 2016, Give Big Kern has helped raise millions of dollars from thousands of donors for hundreds of local nonprofits. And this is money that goes directly into their unrestricted funds so they can use it for whatever they want as soon as they get it. And we are able, thanks to our generous sponsors, to offer Give Big Kern at no cost to the nonprofits. And Kern Community Foundation takes exactly zero dollars. From, uh, from the donations. So 100% goes right back to that nonprofit. The credit card company takes it. They're a little, little yeah, <laughs> right, right. But there, so you want to get money to, and that's always, you know, conversation piece that people say, well, yeah, I want to do it, but I don't want to know that 25% gets knocked off and taken over here before administrative fees. Right. right. This goes straight to the nonprofit. Uh, the benefit of doing it through Give Big Kern is that it helps that nonprofit get some attention. And people are competitive. So if you start seeing one nonprofit making money, people will want to support that one. Or if they've got one that they like uh, similarly, again, they get competitive and they'll try to try to bid up on the other side and everybody wins. And what kind of dollars are we talking about, Ray? I know you said millions of dollars, but what are we looking at? I mean, you had mentioned just before we started recording that you're kind of like in a historical pace pre Big Kern Day. Off, off to a hot start for sure. Last year, we brought in almost $966,000 on the giving day, as well as over 10,000 uh, volunteer hours pledged. Wow. Um, and, and everybody wants to talk about hitting the, a certain milestone, right. which would be great. 
Uh, but that's a vanity metric. Um, don't get me wrong. It would be cool to hit that. But if we have 125 nonprofits who are doing give big Kern and one of them hits a huge number. And so we set our, we set our, our big number record and then the rest of them don't meet their goals, then that's a fail. Mm -hmm. And if we have a decline in the total dollars given and every single nonprofit is happy, then that's a win. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always the, uh, the big goal of fundraising and you don't really have a number set, but you want to, before you even throw the number out there, you want to have a bunch of it already in the bank on other, that way you don't get to that point, right? Where you don't meet that number and it feels like a fail. So it's good not put a number out, but I mean, based on last year, 965 was an all time high. Um, and it sounds like you're on pace to uh, not jinx it, but you're on pace to potentially surpass that this year. Fingers crossed. And, and again, the winners here are the nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. that are doing all this great work around Kern County. So how does, so if somebody were to, to participate and give Big Kern, they make a donation, is the donation specific to a nonprofit or they can give it kind of generically to you and you guys then disperse it? How does that all work? Specific to a nonprofit. Okay, gotcha. So you go to givebigkern.org and you can either search by name or you can search by what type of service that they do. Okay, great. And then that money just goes minus the little credit card fees. The money goes to yeah. the nonprofit. Well, you can pay, you can choose to pay the credit card fee on your own. I always do that, yeah. by the way, uh, not to pat my own back, but when I'm doing a credit card donation, it says we like to donate an additional dollar, you know, 365 to offset the fees. Yes, I would. That way, you know, the money it's going, that hundred dollar donation is going as a hundred dollars, not, right. you know, one ninety six and change. So now, I know that with uh, the Tehachapi Police Foundation uh, here local, uh, we can't get any more local than that as yeah. a part of helping the Tehachapi Police Department. Do we have other Tehachapi-based uh, nonprofits that are participating? We do. Marley's Mutz is a perennial top earner mm -hmm. for us during Give Big Kern. Saracosa Community College also does well. We get uh, Rising Star Riders, I think is new this year, up in Tehachapi. And then from... Um, Caliente, I've got Breckenridge Canine Border Collie Rescue. Okay. And those are the, the ones that are based out of here. I've also got so many that are countywide, like your, your Cap K's, um, who provide services across the county. Right. Cap K is one of the participants up here in, in Tehachapi with our Meals on Wheels program, giving uh, food to the food bank for the uh, the senior citizens or, or uh, club. So there's uh, a, a big tie-in that comes back locally right. through them. Yeah, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, right. you, you know, you name it. If, if it touches Tehachapi and it's a nonprofit, you can probably find them and give Big Kern. Now, if there's a, a nonprofit out there right now saying, hey, I'd I, gosh, I, I forgot this year. I didn't, I didn't, mm -hmm. how can I participate? Is it too late for them? Okay. So step one is go to our website and sign up for our e-newsletter so that you never miss an opportunity like this. Uh, as of today, May 2nd, it is not too late. You just have to go to, uh, I give us a call, call us at our office. Okay. And what's the number? It is uh, 661 three, two, five, five, three, four, six, or kernfoundation.org. Right. But you're going to want to talk to teams. Okay. Her name is teams. And teams was on the show two years ago. Yeah. Yes. I think she was. Yeah. yeah. Well, Great. excellent. Okay. So if you're, if you're listening to this and you, you know, by the time you hear it, you might be a little bit late for this year, but you can at least get yourself prepped for next year's event. Right. Plus the introduction is great because when we're not doing give big Kern, a big part of what the foundation does is strengthening nonprofits and we have to know you to work with you. Uh, and I, you know, you guys know me, I love Tatchby. I'd never miss a chance to come up yeah. here. So if there was an organization up here that we could spend some time helping them either grow or get organized or, or anything like that, I'll be up here real quick. Well, Aaron, you, I remember if I remember correctly from our last conversation a couple of years ago, you guys also help people that are trying to form their nonprofits and that's part of what the organization does. Right. Okay. So if, if someone's got an idea and, and so same thing. They go to the website or, and, and call what, do, what do they need to do or how are you able to help them guide through this, uh, the nonprofit world or to become a nonprofit? Yeah. I mean, the easiest way is give us a call and, and we'll talk to anybody. Uh, our website does have a nonprofit empowerment center link. And if you go down onto that one, you can see a lot of how to's on like, here's the basics of filing for a C3, working with the state, working with the IRS. How do you write a charter? How do you find a board of directors? Um, but if you've got questions on any of that stuff, you can give us a call. We also run a series of monthly workshops, which are mostly in Bakersfield, but anybody can come down to them. And those are all on ways that a nonprofit can either <clears throat> structure and govern itself better or win better grant dollars um, or do uh, good reporting once they win that grant. Okay. 
And, what, then, and, outside, and outside of that too, I mean, there's obviously the importance of getting folks established uh, on the nonprofit, but sometimes there's groups that need a little guidance to continue because there are a lot of rules you have to follow in order to stay good with the state and that sort of thing. And the IRS and taxes, you do need to pay those and certain things if you're selling stuff. And um, it's, it's important to stay up on what your insurance and go down the list. This is all just popping in my head from uh, experience with the, the booster club, but you, you have to keep on those things because it's not just, Hey, I got my C3. I'm good to go now. Give me some money. It's like there's a lot of reporting and minutes and all kinds of stuff you got to get back. Yeah. You, you can't really get yourself into trouble until you have the C3 yeah. and then you can really get yourself into trouble. So definitely good to know what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. No. And this time of year, there's always, you know, there's, you're getting close to the, you know, the tax time for, for nonprofits and insurance renewals and that sort of thing. I mean, you, you those are things you have to stay on top of. It's always good to have a solid secretary slash treasurer in your organization that can handle a lot of that stuff. Um, and so there's a lot of rules to follow. So it sounds like you guys do a lot of that supporting role as well to keep people, you know, in, in the positive side of things. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So, what are some of the things a nonprofit or maybe one that's, they don't have the experience or they don't, then they run into problems that you see that you're able to kind of help them. Is there a common area that you see with some maybe newly structured or as you go through a lot of transition of board members and people are new on, on board that they have frequently asked questions about what they're not doing correctly or how they could do it better? No. So number one is always money. And uh, number one B is always grant writing. Mm -hmm. Those are it's easily the, the most, the two most often, two things I hear the most often. Um, after that, I get a lot of people who are in the exploratory stages and it's questions like, how do I pick a board of directors? How many directors do I even need? Mm -hmm. um, what do they do? Do I pay them? Do they pay me? Uh, do I need an address where, you know, how, how do I write my mission statement? Who cares about my values? What, what, who, who, um, when does somebody look at those and why? Yeah. So there's a reason for everything that is done by these professional nonprofits. And so a lot of it is coaching or, or even just guiding uh, somebody who's up and coming on like, here's, here's what you have to do, but more importantly, here's why. Yeah. And, and you bring up something that sounds really small, but you said address um, that comes into play sometimes with insurance. Um, they won't, they won't issue nor send stuff to a PO box. So where's your physical address as in where you have your meetings and that sort of thing. I mean, we've been, you know, we're, we're, we're blessed here in Tehachapi and, and I know it's one that there's a couple of nonprofits utilizing it, but you know, the presence of a place like the village collective, you, know, you can join and be a, a virtual member and get mail there and have some access. And so that's helped some nonprofits to be able to get a legitimate mail flow going and have sign of kind of a base of operations when a lot of nonprofits sometimes, especially smaller ones are operated out of trunks of cars and stuff like that, people carrying their stuff around. So, um, you know, that's, that's always a good thing to remember is even little things like address are important because certain documents have to come to you and, and some folks won't just send them to a PO box. So especially if you've got complex banking going on. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. So outside of give big Kern, which is obviously your super bowl for the year. Um, and then you've got your nonprofit support and startup support, which happens throughout the year. But you mentioned earlier job programs. What are the other things that you all have in your, you know, in your portfolio throughout the year that you're doing with the community foundation? Great question. We run um, a very large scholarship program. I've got, I think now it's 44 different scholarships, uh, everything from K to 12 for private school to college to trade schools. And one application goes to all of the scholarships. And then we have to go through and parse who's eligible for which we had 1800 applicants this year. Dang. We're going to hand out half a million dollars this year in scholarships. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so we've got that going full speed right now, especially with the delays as the federal government can't figure out how to implement the new financial aid rules. Um, yeah. that's delayed the finish of the application process and really put us in a time crunch before awarding scholarships in June. So that's been fun. Um, <laughs> We also run the Bakersfield Youth Jobs Program. Uh, don't let the name fool you. It's not Bakersfield specific, although we are partnering with the city of Bakersfield on a state of California grant to create uh, about 500 paid internships, fellowships, and apprenticeships. And the ones that are open right now, I've got for high schoolers to work in City Hall in Bakersfield uh, 20 hours a week over the summer. And they get placed in departments based on their interests or their skills, whether that's the city manager's office or marketing or BPD, uh, fire department, something like that. We also run a parks mobile program over the summer where we do sports clinics at all of the different bigger parks in town. 
And uh, so, you, you know, every Tuesday you're at this park, every Wednesday you're at that park and you're building relationships with the kids there and showing them how to play basketball or how to, how to, how to run properly, how to stretch, how to play soccer, stuff like that. We also just started our city hall apprenticeship program where we're taking youngsters who want to get into trades, right? So maybe you're doing fleet services or hard waste or um, electrical work or HVAC for the city, but they need to, to build out those. And we're able to help them get their different licenses and certifications through the program at no cost to the participant. We also run a nonprofit internship. And this is really good for if you've got a nonprofit in Tehachapi and you've got a volunteer who's under the age of 30, you can actually go through our youth jobs program and put them on our payroll. And my, so they'd be on my payroll my workers comp placed at your nonprofit doing work. And that's, that's not a summer one. That's year round. So I'm taking up on that. I'm writing that one down real fast. I'm yeah, going to get in on that one. <laughs> yeah. Cause sometimes as a nonprofit, you're, you can't, you can't pay somebody, you know, right, certain, it's hard. Certain, it's yeah, hard. it's tough to do that. So, uh, yeah, that's a good, I'm making a little mental note of that one. <laughs> and we've, we've been able to place in, uh, Taft and in Fraser park and, uh, with, with field who's up here. Mm -hmm. Um, although that's more of a mobile type of internship for them, but yeah. Always looking for great organizations up here. That's interesting. Yeah, it's good to know. <laughs> I've got it, some it, ideas. <laughs> it's amazing the amount of things that you do, you know, and I know, like, as Corey mentioned, this is like the Super Bowl for you. This is the big day. <laughs> and the board, I didn't realize the board of supervisors had deemed the second or the first Tuesday in the month of May as give big Kern day. Yeah, it's official. Wait, how long ago did that take place? Last week. They do it every year. No, but oh. I mean, I originally. 2016. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Right on. Well, 2016 was the first giving day. Okay. Um, honestly, I'm not sure what the first, when, when somebody had the, the bright idea to go to the supervisors. Yeah. 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 I think, I think I actually remember the first give big Kern day in 2016 because it was, you know, I think at the time when I was working at Cal state Bakersfield, we participated in that as, cause it was the first time and it was a big push on that day. Uh, and I think it was a pretty decent day as well on donations and scholarship program stuff. So yeah, that's uh, man, it's hard to believe it's been that long. <laughs> now the scholarship program you mentioned that's, that has closed for this year, these seniors right. this year, right? right? When does the application process begin? For Usually that? it'll open when financial aid forms go out in okay. the fall. All right, so that's it's only six months away for for those that are juniors now, maybe uh, high school juniors that are looking, or I guess you could be in college and you know I, I've, it's been so long since I've been in college. You, know, <laughs> but you can you can obtain scholarships you know while you're already in college, or is it so only some for, of, some of them are available like okay. that? We actually we have some new ones coming in that might be more open to that. Um, the overwhelming majority of them are either for grade school or graduating seniors. Although you could continue to earn that same scholarship, mm -hmm. you know, during the, I guess it's optimistic to say all four years, but during, during the five or six years, you'll probably be at college. Yeah. Okay. Now, how, how's the interest been? You, you brought, you mentioned the fact that you have some scholarships available for trade school students now as well. What's the interest been in those from applicants? Cause I've seen some stories a lot recently on the national level that's showing saying, Hey, a lot of kids getting out of high school, they're pretty smart and they're doing the math and they're thinking if I can either, if I go into a lot of college debt or I can go to a trade school and I can be earning good money really soon. And, and that's all the mentality of the younger generation a lot of time too. So how quickly can I, you know, make a lot of money? So have you seen a good in, uh, response to your trade school scholarship yes, offerings? Yes. It, it reflects that, that overall posture. Yeah. For sure. And there's certainly, you know, there's a shortage of, of skilled trades and, you know, of, of people in the skilled trades and it's super important. And a lot of times the kids get the opportunity eventually one day down the road to work for themselves, have their own company and that sort of thing. And that's attracted a lot of people. Now, the new model that I'm hearing a lot is to jump right into, um, an, an entry level trade out of high school, do that for five or six years and then go get a business degree. Yeah. Yeah, that makes total sense. I, I learned to trade out of high school, kind of in and out of high school. You know, that was just the family business. And it was never something that was supposed to be my future, but it was that kind of backup plan. Uh, if I, you know, of all us fails, at least I, I, I know a trade. And so I, I can't stress the importance. It's tougher to do these days. State laws have changed and how you can work and, and you know, apprenticeships and all that stuff. But uh, if there's an opportunity for, for kids to do that, that's a great it's a great backup plan and you may end up loving it and it'd be your full-time plan. Who knows? And the one thing that we hear, especially in East Kern from and yesterday, when we were at the greater Tehachapi EDC, uh, Danny Bazell from Edwards air force base talked about, they have over 2000 job openings 
and that includes trades. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is, there are a ton of career opportunities at that trade school level. You know, go out and get that certification that you need. And there is a lot of work out here in East Kern that is ready to go. And they are starving <laughs> to put boots on the ground. We were, I mean, even in my last role, we were, we were ringing this bell because, and, and I tell our new apprentices that came through and I'm telling them, you know, Hey, learn this skill, but let me tell you how you get a security clearance. Because if you can weld or do carpentry or electrical work or anything and get a security clearance, you can write your own ticket out at Edwards or China Lake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because you think of all the, all the projects happening, you know, all the aerospace and whether it's NASA, Edwards, China Lake, you know, these things are housed in hangars and what are hangars? Well, they're buildings and they have electrical and they have plumbing and they have welding needs. And it's like, it's not just when we think a lot of the time, we always think Edwards, you automatically assume that everybody's a pilot or with, you know, with NASA, with the, with the Armstrong center, everybody's a pilot or everybody's an engineer. There's a lot of those people, but there's a lot more people that have to take care of everything else around them. And it's, super important. It's, it's, you know, to use their own term mission critical work because it's gotta, it's gotta be done. Yeah, it's fun job security. <laughs> yeah. It's a good point too. Yeah, absolutely. So Aaron, as you, as you've looked back now, you've been in this role, is this your third year? I'm in my third year. Yeah. yeah. So over the last three years, as you look back, there's gotta be a nonprofit, a story that you've heard that's something that, uh, you know, whether it's being a part of the foundation and the, the donations that they re receive through uh, Give Big Kern has had an impact on this nonprofit. Is there anything that you can share, some kind of a story regarding something that's been positive as a result of Give Big Kern Day? Got a lot of positives. It's hard to, it's like choosing among your kids yeah, um, or nieces and nephews, I think in this case. But um, so a good example is the Mountain Communities Family Resource Center out of Fraser Park area. Um, through their Give Big Kern two years ago, it was their first big year. And they brought in enough to hire their first bilingual staffer. And that literally doubled their reach in their community because now somebody was able to speak Spanish at a, at a fluent level. That's a, a, that's an amazing number, you know, to double that reach, you know, based on being able to bring one staff member in that just speaks Spanish. Right. And I really wouldn't have thought that that area would have that many, maybe Spanish only speakers that would benefit from that. But that's, that's a significant number. Right. And, and, you know, historically, um, organizations like Marley's Mutts, when they were a little bit younger, would have a really big Give Big Kern Day. And because those are unrestricted dollars, they're not grant dollars that have to be used for a very specific reason. You can use that to grow your capabilities and capacities as an organization, which then allows you to level up and go after larger pots of funding. And we just had Marley's Mutts on the podcast just a couple of weeks ago. Maya yeah. was uh, was chatting with them about what they do and the, the dog crisis that's going on in Kern County right now. So they are an important nonprofit that uh, plays a significant role in animal care and placement, keeps them out of uh, kill shelters. So that's uh, another one of the our locals that are doing the right thing. And they've been they've been great partners. They come down for all of our events. We just had our big meet and greet at uh, the park at Riverwalk in Bakersfield. And they were there. They were at our kickoff press conference. And if you're ever, if you're out there and you're ever doing uh, public speaking, and you're not totally sure if you're going to come off properly, if you can get your hands on a little puppy yeah. and just hold the puppy <laughs> while you're talking onto the camera, uh, and Marley's Mutts has like the most photogenic puppies. Yeah, um, it's it's like kryptonite. It's amazing. <laughs> Nobody can hurt you. Yeah, and th and that's you know they're they're one of the examples, and every nonprofit has the same sort of story and role. They're filling gaps. Nonprofits fill gaps, uh, whether that's be a maybe there's a, a a topic or an area that's sort of marginalized and it's not something that a ton of people and, and resources focus on. But there's enough people to be able to form an agency, a nonprofit group to address that need. I mean, Marley's Mutts have a Heart Humane Society. Those people that there's a lot of gaps in Kern County and animal control, uh, just in the behaviors of people, socioeconomics. Their job is to fill those gaps. They want to raise adoption. They want to do adoptions and, and no kill shelters and that sort of thing. That's their sort of their role. And every nonprofit has that gap to fill. And the best way that you can help them by filling those gaps
steps by donating. And then these, you know, these are charitable contributions, uh, you know, tax write-off gifts. I mean, it's very important. And that's why we see, you know, thankfully a lot of people will do that not only to help the cause, but also it's a, it's a deduction for them as well, which, uh, you know, which is important. So, and, and I'll say it feels good to give, yeah, like to, to be able, I mean, $5, $500, five hours, um, there's research on this. When you are able to give a little bit to something that you care about, you carry that with you a lot longer than if you were to just go, you know, buy yourself a drink or, or go see a movie. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's the part too about it is you know that that uh, you 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 do that to the non you donate to the nonprofit you kind of have that connection with, um, you know, in my experience here locally, mostly with with a few others, but a lot with with Warrior Boosters is you, you find people that connect to they connect to sports, the business owners that connect to and you know, they connect to sports they want and they also want to show and, and see the you know whether it's an advertising man or something that let people know like hey this can, company supports your your local kids they support the efforts of student athletes on the field or whether it's a support the adoption efforts of someone like Marley's Mutz or Have a Heart. So that they like that part too, showing that their company, their entity supports this effort. I'm glad you brought that up actually. For Give Big Kern, we have matches. And a match is when a person or a company says, hey, I want to support this organization, but rather than just writing a $5,000 check, I will match the next $5,000 in donations. Nice. And the Kern Community Tennis Association has like eight matches, like oh. eight different people and businesses have said, Hey, tennis is important. We want to make sure that this is available for people in all neighborhoods across Kern County. So I'm going to match the next thousand dollars, or I'm going to match the next $5,000 for people who donate to this organization. And so you can go there and double your impact. Yeah. You were going to donate 50 bucks anyway, but now it's a hundred because there's a match. Yeah. Awesome. It's a great idea. That's interesting. I never uh, kind of thought about the, the matches, the challenge, the, the things that go out as a part of this, but you know, you just got to be, uh, I guess, open as you, as you're giving and donating to take a look and, uh, you know, your dollars really can have a, a greater impact. Yeah. And, and people are competitive, as I said. So yeah. <laughs> if they see that we are only $200 to finish out the, the $5,000 match True. that, that every single time that gets closed out. Very cool. That's awesome. So Give Big Kern is Tuesday, May 7th. And if you're listening to this after May 7th, there's still opportunities uh, for people to donate year round. Year round. In fact, we if you go to our website at kernfoundation.org, we've got a list of our funds. And we, we run about 200 different funds for various organizations in Kern County. And you can donate to any one of those. And, and they can be as specific as helping first responders with PTSD to as broad as supporting animals um, and, and everything in between. So you can donate to those anytime you want, or if you even wanted to start your own fund or your own initiative, uh, you can give me a call and we we'll talk you through that process. Excellent. Nice. Okay. So we've got Tuesday, May 7th that we're putting that on the calendar, give big Kern day and you can go to Kern foundation.org. Dot org. Yeah. And it, Aaron, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you want to, you want to bring up? Well, if you're in Bakersfield on Tuesday, we'll be doing a watch party at Tembler uh, okay. Brewery. And so we'll- Good choice. 5 p.m. Uh, we'll feed you. I'll buy you a beer if you show up. And then we've got so many amazing raffle prizes from our sponsors. Um, and those aren't raffle tickets that you buy. You just get an entry when you come through the door. Nice. Uh, and then we'll be watching the dollars come in on the screen and it's going to be a party. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> good time. What time does that start? Five o'clock. Okay. That's always the downside of uh, when you're organizing something like this or any kind of fundraising campaign, like, and you hit that number and then you're like, okay, that's awesome. And then you think we have to do better next year. <laughs> There's, you never, <laughs> you never just say, ah, we were, you know, we're, we're good. This is a great level. You always think like, all right, next year we got to ramp it up another 5%, 10%, whatever it might be. People are competitive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you never settle with just like, be the great to be the same as last year. No, you're like, oh my do like 10% more. So the work begins and you I mean, looking at last year's press release, heck you put out after you had your number finalized, you put out that press release in September and said, we're already working on May 7th of 2024. So the work begins almost immediately once everything is, is counted. Can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> well, nicely done. Aaron, anything else? That Thank you so much on? for having me on, man. This it, is fun. We appreciate it. And uh, we bumped uh, Maya and I bumped into Aaron at the state of the county. Mm -hmm. that event down in Bakersfield. So it was nice to, to see you there. And then it sparked that. It's like, okay, we didn't talk about big, give big Kern with Aaron directly last year. So we wanted to reach out and make sure you were a part of it this year and do anything we can to, to help support what you're doing. Appreciate it. 
All right. All right. Corey, anything in closing? No, sir. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Aaron, thank you for making the, the trek up to Tehachapi, the place that you love. Thank Someday you. you'll call home. Uh, if, if rates come down a little bit we'll talk okay. <laughs> great answer <laughs> all right folks we appreciate the time you spend with us don't forget go to kernfoundation.org you can find out more about give big kern day uh, you can make your donation you've got a donation portal uh, through that page uh, so just go to it log in create your little account and then you can make donations to whatever organization you want to help super simple Okay. All right, folks. We, uh, if you have a question for Aaron, send it to us at media at Tehachapi City Hall. We'll get it to him. And we appreciate the time you spend with us. And we'll catch you again soon right here on Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi, featuring the community members who make this such a special place to call home. If you have a question or a thought you'd like to share, email media at TehachapiCityHall.com. Thank you to Gary Mazzola for sharing his song, This is Tehachapi.